Feminist Creativers presents a word for every generation that knows no fashion. Greetings, my dear friends. I hope and trust I find you well. For this week, we want to consider the experiences from Mount Moab as articulated and or expressed in the life of Lot and his family. And we we're going to find this in Genesis chapter 19. For this morning, we want to look at verse 17, and Friday, we're going to look at verse 30. If you can spare time to read ahead, it will do you good. And for this morning, come with me to Genesis chapter 19, and we are at verse 17 in the Amplified Version. It reads as follows. When they had brought them outside, one of the angels said, Escape for your life. Do not look behind you or stop anywhere in the entire valley. Escape to the mountains of Moab, or you will be consumed and swept away. May the good Lord bless the reading of his word, even as we pray. Let us pray. Kind and gracious Father in the heavens above, thank you, dear Lord, for the privilege of considering your word. Uh, dear Lord, we do not wish to be consumed by sin or swept away on the day of judgment. We appeal for the name and service of Jesus Christ. May he be our conqueror, our victor, our redeemer and savior. This has been our prayer of faith. In Jesus' name we pray and ask, Amen. Before we go into the week, why don't we raise five questions and five answers for our working week. And when things are so hard that God has decided to bring issues to a close, what is the solution? Heaven has an evacuation plan. At point number one, heaven has an evacuation plan. Let us get some background on verse 17. What had happened? One day as Abraham was seated by the gate of the city, three angels come over and he brings these angels into his home. Little does he know that immediately his home had been turned into a strategy room. One of these angels was the archangel, Michael, the Lord. As they discussed about the fate of Sodom and Gomorrah, Abraham begins to make proposals and counter proposals. God, what if they are 10 people ultimately? He appeals, will you save Lot and Sodom and Gomorrah? Well, of course, he spoke about Sodom and Gomorrah, but surely you and I know he must have had Lot and his family in mind. Now, Christ finally says, if we find only turn, Sodom and Gomorrah shall be spared. This strategy was planned. This strategy was set. Now, all that remained was the execution. Now, the two angels then proceed to Sodom and Gomorrah. Upon their arrival, they are met by Lot, who is also seated by the gate of the city. May you and I make this a habit to look out for visitors. Whether we're in our churches, look out for visitors. Make them comfortable. Make them welcome. Now, when Lot welcomes these visitors, they go on to share with him what the mission was all about. Of course, this was after the gentlemen of Sodom had decided to what has come to be known as sodomize them because of their deed. Now, in their attempt to sodomize the angels, they were struck with blindness and the plan was then laid bare for Lot to know Sodom and Gomorrah had come to the end of their path. There was no way there was going to be Sodom in a day or two down the line. Now, Sodom and Gomorrah, even though they are to come to an end, Lot is now told on this evacuation plan, Lot you are the person of interest. Make sure you can claim whatsoever or whosoever is part of your household. Let them come with you as we evacuate you. And I pray, may you be the Lord in someone's life. May you be the Lord in your family. May your people who are connected to you find themselves on an evacuation list because there is a lot in your life. And I pray, dear Lord, may I be the Lord in my family. As heaven executes an evacuation plan, may my family find itself on the list 
because I have been the Lord in their lives. In this evacuation plan, Lot now goes over to his sons-in-law or sons-in-law to be, and they thought he was joking. They did not take him serious. And as a result, they remained where they were. They were banned and we never hear of them ever again. Why? Because they thought the word of the Lord is a talk. How many times have we had messages from the Lord calling upon us to evacuate, calling upon us to leave planet Earth to plan for our exit program and we thought it was a talk. We never took it serious. God is calling upon you. I want to give you this moment so that you can sink in. God is calling upon you and I leave Leave this earth. There is no life. It will not be around for long. I love the way God works with Lot and his family. He shows us something. What does he show us? God says the angels, when they saw that Lot was dilly darling by the morning in verse 16, they took him in one hand, his wife in the other hand, one angel dragged them out. The second angel took his daughter in one hand, the other daughter in the other hand, and dragged them out. When they were outside the walls of the city, and then the other angel now speaks, and he says unto Lot and his family, Escape for your life. Whenever an agent of heaven speaks, Hey ho, train your ears to listen to this. It is a matter of life and death. There is no invitation to the mountain unless and until your life is at risk. Death is knocking at your door and Christ has come with the message, I bring you good news, escape for your life. Now as they go on to escape for their lives, they are not to escape anyhow, they are not to escape in any direction, they are given particulars on how to escape. Point number three is clear. He then goes on to say, do not look behind you. Number two, alternatively, do not stop anywhere in the entire valley. Now we have Christians who have said, Lord, I am willing to escape for the sake of my life, but they are busy looking behind. We know what became of Lord's wife. She did look behind. Many of us have left the life of sin, but our hearts have never left. We are busy with what was left behind. And even on the way, when Christ leads the way, we do not keep pace. We are stopping at every valley in the dark. Valleys escape for your life. Escape for your life. Point number four. The Bible says you are to escape to the mountains of Moab, to the mountains of Moab. We are not to escape to the valleys. I said this before and I shall repeat it again. We are to escape to the mountains. We are headed for higher ground. There is no safety in the valley. There is safety only where we have a vantage point. There is safety only when we make it to the mountain top. And ladies and gentlemen, point number five, this earth is about to catch fire. It's about to catch fire. Are you ready to escape? There is an evacuation plan and we are headed to Mount Zion. Are you ready to make it to Mount Zion? We are marching to Zion. And point number one, heaven has an evacuation plan. Are you ready to exit? Point number two, heaven is talking to you on matters of life and death. Escape for your life. Point number three, instructions are clear. They are spelled out. Do not look back. Do not stop until you make it to the mountain top. It is our destination. We are marching to Zion. See you there. God bless you. Blessings and peace.